Hi, Ed. Hey, Donato. How are you, buddy? Good. How are you? I am good. <laughs> good to see you again. Good to see you, too. All right. So we got one, one early bird, and then should be some more people coming in soon. <laughs> cool. Let's see. I'm going to need to share my screen, too. Oh, yeah. Let's test that out. Are you able to share? Uh, it says disabled. Right disabled. Now. Okay, let me um, check on that. If you go to under security, I think it is. There's a thing that says. Um, yeah, that's usually there. But well, I guess not for. There we go, all panelists. There you go. Good. Okay. Yeah, it's weird that security thing is isn't showing for <laughs> oh. apparently for the webinar, but uh, I got who can start sharing when someone else is sharing. Okay, good. All right. So are, you, are you streaming this anywhere or is it just on Zoom? Um, just on Zoom. Um, I actually could stream it while we're waiting for everyone to join. I wonder if I should stream it on one of these. I can stream it on. <laughs> Facebook, YouTube. All right, I'm going to click to see. I've done the Facebook one before, so I'll stream it onto there. See a few more, a few more people joining, and then a couple more should be coming on that email this morning, telling me that they were looking forward to this. So we'll wait okay. another another few minutes, and then we'll. We, I'm sure we can get started. And we're we are recording, so. Um, there were a few. Yeah, I had about, I had like seven people tell me they were coming. I don't know if they signed up or not, but. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I had a few people that couldn't attend live, but said that they were interested and they wanted the recording. So we'll um, <laughs> send That's that awesome. out to them. Yeah. You've been busy? Yeah. 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 So busy time of year. It seems like a lot of people. <clears throat> and then once we get to do it, everybody will start vacationing again. Hmm. All right, I'll start sharing. I'm going to start streaming it to my page and then we'll be able to at least get the get started. All right, it's just connecting now. And I will keep track of questions. Um, I'll post it in a chat if any, if new as new people join. Um, if there are questions, you can post it to the Q and A or to the chat, and then um, we'll uh, we'll ask you at the end. <laughs> if there's good. any that are real relevant, directly relevant, feel free to stop and if you see them coming in and 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 cover those those questions live. Um, and yeah, we might as well while well get started. Uh, Thank you, you all who have uh, shown up so far. Um, happy to host Ed on this uh, webinar about case study marketing. Um, Ed, do you want to give a little bit of background and a little bit of an overview of um, what we're going to be talking about today? Yeah, sure. So, uh, hi, everybody. Ed McDonough. My company's called EC Marketing Services. And we've been in business since 2009. And since uh, just before COVID, uh, so a couple of years now, we started to work with uh, professional service providers and other folks who provide B2B services uh, you know, to their clients uh, and helping them do uh, write case studies and use them as a marketing tool uh, for their system to actually not only generate leads, but also uh, help close deals and use it as a pre-sales tool as well. So that's what we'll be talking about today. I'm gonna to take you through the process, show you what a case study is, um, how to formulate it, give you an opportunity to uh, download a template, the same template that we use, and um, show you the whole process. Great. That sounds good. So I'll um, I'll pull up the questions list, and then do you want to get into your um, presentation? Yeah, sure. Let me just share my screen. Screen here. 
All right, so welcome to uh, case study marketing. And um, so let's just start off right now uh, by talking about, uh, well, let me get my presentation over. There we go. Um, why, why they work so well? Why do case studies work so well? The first reason is, is when they're written correctly, they actually tell a story which changes the reader's perception about your business. And it shows how you help clients either solve a problem or achieve a goal. And you know, basically that's why everybody's coming to us is they either wanna solve a problem or achieve a goal. The second thing case studies do, is they allow the reader to see themselves getting the same results. And that's really powerful. So I'm a trained copywriter. My specialty is in direct response copywriting or some people call it sales copywriting. And you know, through copywriting, what we're always trying to do is move the reader along in the story to, so that when they get to the end of it, they take some kind of action. And so that's what, um, that's what case studies, again, written in the, in the format that we're talking about today, that's what they help people do is they help them move them through the stories and they get to, them to see for themselves that they can get the same results. The third thing they do is they build the know, like, and relate to factor. Now you've probably heard people say no like and trust, right? It's a it's a pretty big term that's out there. Everybody says, you know, your your audience has to know like and trust you. Well, before somebody can trust you, they actually have to be able to relate to you. And and the way they do that is you have to relate to them. And that's one of the things that case studies do is they bridge that opportunity to get people to start to relate to you so that we can get them into that stage where they where they actually trust you and want to do business with you. The fourth thing that case studies do is they act as another type of social proof. So we all know that recommendations and reviews and testimonials are awesome. They're great tools to have in your marketing toolkit. But what a case study does is it, it puts those, all those things together and, and it becomes another form of social proof. And of course, anything that someone else says about your business is way more powerful than what you say about your business. And a case study is another one of those tools for you to use. And then the fifth thing they, they are is they're evergreen. So here's a really cool thing about case studies. When you write a case study, it's good today, it's good tomorrow, it's good a year from now, it's good for five years from now, as long as your target audience hasn't changed. So, uh, so that's, the, that's the beauty of them. They can be used over and over again, and they can be used many different ways. I'm going to show you four different ways today that you can use case studies to, as a, as a pre-sales tool to get people to want to take the next step and engage with you and start talking about the services that you have to offer. So let's talk about the format. So what we need to do here is case studies need to tell a story to your target audience. So I don't want to be really specific about this because there are, there's probably a lot of people on here that have different verticals in their business. And one of the things that you want to do is if you have, you know, if you're a, um, if you're a website design company and you do SEO and website design and pay-per-click advertising, um, those are three different verticals. So, so you need case studies for each one of those verticals to get them to work the most effective. If you try to generalize your case studies, you're not going to get the same type of results that you will when your case studies are specific for the target audience that you're in. So let's talk about the format. There are many different styles of case studies. Uh, some are written almost like white papers. Some are uh, multiple pages long. What we're talking about here is a one page document, and I'll show you exactly what they look like, that has all these components on it. So number one is it has a headline, and that headline is compelling, it's benefit driven, and it has client results right in the headline. We wanna hook the reader, we wanna get their attention right away and, and to tell them that we can solve a problem that they have. So having a headline in your case study is really important. Most case study courses teach you not to do that. Okay, so we're breaking the rules here. Um, the second, the first section of it after the headline is the problem that your client wants to solve or the goal they want to achieve. So we talk about that. And again, it's in story format. The next thing is we talk about the exact solution you provided. So this isn't a full dissertation of how from this, the day you met your client to the, you know, the, the day the project got ended, how you, you know, what you did to solve that. It's just a quick overview, a couple of sentences, a paragraph or two about 
the solution you provided to help this client, again, solve their problem or achieve their goal. And then the third thing is the specific results the client received. And this is really critical here because what we want to show is we want to show exactly what the solution you provided, the results that came from that. So uh, if I didn't say that correctly, we want to show the, the exact results the person got from the solution you provided to them. That solves their problem that we talked about in section, section one. An optional thing that you can do with this is you can also add a client testimonial to this section. And again, it makes it more powerful. And we do this all the time is we add uh, you know, a one, one or two sentences from a client's testimonial to the case study, and it just makes it more powerful. Again, it's, it's social proof. It's what somebody else is saying about your company or your business that, that's most powerful. And then the fourth section, and this is where a lot of people drop the ball, is having a call to action. What is the specific thing that you want somebody to do when they're done reading your case study? So you've, you've sent them this case study, they've read the whole thing, they get to the bottom of it, what is the next action you want them to take? You have to be very specific with this. If you want them to call you, you put your phone number there. If you want them to email you at your email address, if you want them to book an appointment, there's a link there to book an appointment. So um, let me show you what one looks like. So here's an actual case study that's from one of my clients. Again, it's one eight and a half by 11 type written page. We, we keep it in this format because we wanna make sure that it's easy to digest. Someone's, you know, someone's not gonna read a, a four or five page document. We wanna keep it really simple, really straightforward and highlight the benefit the person will get by taking the next step. So in this case, you can see that, uh, or maybe you can't see it, I'll read it because it might be small on your screen. The title of this says, over $60,000 in 30 days from one campaign. So this is a client of mine who used our case study uh, marketing system to generate revenue for their, for their business. So that, that headline hooks somebody right away to say, well, geez, how can I, how can I generate that kind of revenue uh, from one campaign? And it gets them to read the whole case study. And so that's the, that's the premise here is that we wanna bring the person through the whole process. The other thing I want you to notice is that there's no logos, there's no graphics on this, there's really not a lot about my company or your company on this, except for what's in the solution section. Because again, this isn't about you, this is about getting the reader to take the next step towards becoming your client. So this format works extremely well. We've been doing this for a couple of years and literally have generated tens of thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of dollars in business from using this case study uh, format that you have right here. And again, at the end, I'll give you access so that you can get a template uh, and, and use the same template that we're using here. Um, so how do we market this? How do we market these case studies? Well, one of the ways we do it, and, and I'll talk about some other ones as well, but one of the ways we do it is through email marketing. So what we do is we create a five-part email sequence that's just about the case study. It's, it's about getting the, someone to read the email and go to the case study and read the case study. And then from the case study, we recommend that the call to action is to set up an appointment. So if you're a professional serv service provider, a consultant, a web designer, graphic designer, um, uh, someone who provides any kind of professional services to other businesses or, or even uh, consumers, this will work for you. And, and we highly recommend that the case study call to action is booking an appointment. And here's why. We get somebody, we send somebody an email, we tell them about the case study, they go and they read the case study, they book an appointment with you. Here's the real power of this, is after they book the appointment, one or two days later, we send them another case study. And this is really where the magic of this process happens is because by the time you get them on the phone, they've read one or two of your case studies, which are about clients who have the same problem that they have that you've helped solve that problem. And so it's getting them to relate to you, right? We talked about that earlier. It's getting them to say to themselves, this is for me. I really want to see what this person has to offer. And it's extremely powerful. And there's other ways we can use case studies too. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But this this option of using email marketing, sending, sending your, to your list emails that say, hey, look, I just wrote this case study. 
that shows uh, how I helped someone just like you solve the same problem you have, click here to go read it. They click it, they go read it, they book the appointment, you send them another case study. It's, it's a really well-oiled machine for getting people to pay attention to you and engage with you enough to get on the phone and have a conversation with you. So um, the goal of the email is to get the person to read the case study. So again, we create a five-part email sequence and each one of these emails builds off the previous one. So let me give you a high level example of what that looks like. So the first email will say something like, hey, John, um, uh, I just put together this case study that shows uh, how we help the client just like you solve the same problem you have. Click here to go read it. To read the case study, click here. The next email will say, hey, John, a couple of days ago, I sent you an email about a case study that we put together that shows how we helped a client just like you solve the same problem you have. To read the case study, click here. About a week later, you send them another email that says the same thing. A week ago, I sent you an email that talked about a case study that shows how we help the client just like you solve the problem, same problem you have. Click here to read the case study. Right? So you can see how they build against each other. These are really simple emails. Again, the goal of the email is just to get the person to go and read the case study. There's no graphics in the email. There's your header isn't in there. Your logo isn't there in there. Just keep it as simple as possible. Make the email about reading the case study and then put a link in there. The other thing we do is, uh, is we recommend that you do not attach your case study to the email. So email marketing is my specialty. We've built our own platform. We don't use a third-party service like Infusionsoft or MailChimp or Constant Contact or any of those. Uh, over the past uh, four or five years, we've sent millions and millions of emails. And what we found is that the less you put in the email, the, the, more, the higher your delivery rate is. And the higher your delivery rate is, the higher your engagement rate is. So again, we use a five-part email sequence and we send that five-part email sequence over a 16-day period. The reason why we use five parts in 16 days is again, because of millions and millions of tests we've done, we found that this sequence over this period of time gets the highest level of engagement, which means it gets people to read the email, go read the case study and get them, get them to set the appointment. Um, and so again, this is, a, this is a tried and true testing that we've done over and over and over again. Um, so let's talk about the, the email sequence. So this is how we send the, the, the emails out over the 16 day period. So message one goes out day one, whatever that day is, it doesn't matter, it could be Monday. Three days after you send message one, you wanna send message two. Message three goes out four days after message two. Message four goes out four days after message three. And message five goes out four days after message four. And again, this is a proven sequence. We found this to work extremely well. Um, but uh, again, using those five parts over the 16 day period. Um, so again, this is exactly what we do for our customers and you can implement and do the same thing. And it doesn't matter what client you're using. You can do this on MailChimp or Constant Contact or, or your CRM. Uh, we've had clients do it in every kind of platform that there is and it works extremely well. Now, an option to this is instead of having a PDF, we actually send people to a web page that looks kind of like a PDF. It looks like a document that has the case study on it. The reason why we do this, so it, this is how I do it when someone comes to me and we, we set up our done for, you, done for you service with them. The reason why we do it this way is because uh, PDFs, a lot of people will be getting their emails on their phones and a lot of times it requires them to download the PDF and then open it and read it. So it's kind of like an extra step where if you can put this on a web page, they click the link in the email, it takes them to a web page, they read the case study right there. So it's, it's a much better way to do it, uh, in my opinion. And again, on the page, we want it to just make it look like it's a piece of paper. So let me show you an example here. So this is, an, this is the actual page that we send people to. So it looks like a white piece of paper on a gray background. It looks just like a PDF would, except for it's not. It's actually a web page. They can read the whole thing. And then down the bottom is the call to action. There's a blue button down there. In this case, we're looking for them to schedule an appointment. So that's the whole process. That's the email marketing strategy that we use when we do these case studies. Now, I said, I said case studies were evergreen, and they are. There's, there's other ways to use them. 
So another way that you can use case studies is at a networking event. So you go to a networking event, could be virtual, could be a one-on-one, -on -one, whatever, and you're having a conversation with somebody and they fit into your target market, they seem like they're an ideal client, you just ask them, hey, John, listen, I put together this case study that shows how I helped someone just like you who had the same problem you have um, solve that problem. Would you be interested in taking a look at that? I always like to ask permission first rather than just send it to them because it opens the door. Once they say yes to that, not only are they saying yes to you sending them the case study, but they're also saying yes to you to follow up with them. So then a couple of days later, after you send them the case study, you can start another dialogue. You can have a conversation with them. Hey, did you have the chance to read the case study? Did you have any questions about it? Uh, do you think this is a way that, you know, uh, did you see the process that we use? Do you think that's a way that can help you and your business solve your problem? So again, it's a great, great tool. Another way to do it is with social media. So um, a lot of people, uh, you know, make connections on LinkedIn. Rather than just send your connection, the, the case study, ask permission first. And again, it's the same process. Hey, John, it's great to connect with you. Listen, I just put together a case study that shows how I help someone just like you solve the same problem you have. Would you be interested in seeing that? When they say yes, you can DM the PDF right through you know, LinkedIn or, or Facebook or whatever platform that you, they're using. And then again, because you ask permission, it opens the door for that follow-up. So really, really cool process. Now this next one, you're really gonna love because we're going old school here. It's snail mail. So what you can do is go out and, and by the way, I have my clients do this all the time and I do this myself. We go out and we find five businesses that we really want to target, we find who the decision maker is that in that business. We print the case study out and then we put it in a plain envelope and we send it to them. Now, here's a little secret that I'm going to share with you today. If you want to get that case study in the person's hand, in the decision maker's hand, past any gatekeepers, then what you need to do is this. You need to put it into a plain envelope and handwrite their name, uh, address, city and state and zip code on it. And then for the return address, you do not put your name or your company name. You just put your street address, your city, state and zip code. That's all that's required to do that. I also recommend putting them into an ivory or cream color envelope. Make it look as personal as possible. And that will keep the gatekeeper from opening it and putting it right into the hands of the decision maker because it looks personal. And by the way, if you like, um, if the person uh, has a, a you know a, a title like doctor or whatever, do not put that on the envelope. Just put their first name and last name, and I guarantee this is going to get your case study in front of the person who's most likely to make the, the decision. So, um, if you'd like some follow-up information for this, you can go to casestudymarketingguide.com and download my free case study guide. It also has a template. Um, and that's it. That's the whole process. So I'm going to um, go over to Donato and ask him if there's any questions. Yeah. Yeah. There's some questions too. And um, awesome. if you want, I'll, I'll send the attendee list and you'll be able to, if you want to follow up and send this out to the attendees, that would be, I think everybody would appreciate awesome. that. <laughs> yep. um, there were some questions that came in. So I have them. Um, I have them here. I put them ahead of my own questions. <laughs> a very good presentation. Thank you. Oh, thanks. Uh, Hopefully it's helpful. So when, when do you get the most response with what, which days? That's a, that's a great question. So, uh, so here's a little trick. I recommend that you uh, start the sequence. If you're business, if you're B2B in particular, if you're, if you're uh, sending emails to a business owner, the best time to start is uh, on Sunday night, send those emails somewhere around six, seven, 8 PM. Uh, you'll get the highest open rate when you do that. Uh, I quite often find that the most engagement comes with, with emails four and five, believe it or not. So um, it, it does vary on, depending upon industry, but that's why you want to send a five-part email sequence, you know, just about the same case study, because uh, someone may open the first one and they'll go, oh, that's really cool, but I don't have time to do it right now. And so those subsequent emails are reminders, and that's why it's it's so important to do that. Mm -hmm. Another question that came up longer one. 
Um, do you suggest that in the email we should specify that is a sh that it is a short or one page case study so the recipient knows it will not take a lot of time? That's a that's a great idea. Yes, I, I recommend that. A lot of times I I'll put something like uh, it will take you less than two minutes to read or something like that. So that's yeah, great. Great question. Awesome. Yeah. This no, no, new one just came in. Actually, I was thinking the same, wondering the same thing. A lot of clients have this nervousness. Um, do you get permission from clients when you put them on a case study or um, do you include their name on it? Or what are some of the scenarios that you kind of have seen with that decision of just that's a, should be? <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's another great question. So there's two ways to do case studies. We call them named and unnamed. So unnamed is obviously you don't want the name of the, the client on there. Those case studies work really, really well. But of course, if you can uh, name the client and you can get a testimonial from them and put a blurb on there, um, then um, you know they work extremely well. Also, what I'll do too is I will put the link to the to the case study that I use all the time, so you can model that. You can see what I put in there um, for you know for the for the quote from the client. So you can do them both ways. Um, typically, what happens is we'll have a client that will uh, you know we usually we usually write four or five case studies for a client. So we'll have two or three that are named, you know, have the, have the company's name in there and the person and, you know, one or two that are not. So they, they, they're all powerful, but, you know, if you can actually specify the company that's there and you can put in specific results in the result category. So, you know, um, uh, generated 60,000, know, not just generated more business or more clients, but generated $60,000 in revenue. You know that's a specific number, so that that makes them more powerful. It's a great question. Awesome. And um, what do you use for such web pages? So how how do you set up your landing pages for the case studies? Um, so we have our own system, so it's just built into them. So uh, you know we hard code everything, uh, but there are um, companies like um, Lead Pages will let you just set up a you know a page like that. It's a it's a third party service you'd have to pay for. Uh, if you have WordPress, you can do it in WordPress too. It's okay if, like, if you do it in a WordPress, it's okay if it has the menu bar at the top, but you really just want to try to eliminate all distractions on that page. Again, the focus is to get them to read the case study. So you don't want to have lots of other links and places they can go. The more simple you can make that page, the better. Mm -hmm. And, um, would you ever include a short testimonial statement on the introductory introductory email to get them to read the case study to entice them to read the case study? We have done that, and it and it does work. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated than what I was explaining today, but uh, so so yes, you can do that. It, it you know it, you can put something like uh, you know uh, we we've been able to help a client just like you. So when I say just like you, you want to specify what it is. So so I'll use my my uh, my business as an example. So I um, I prospect a lot to professional service providers who are consultants, B two B consultants is for businesses. So they help businesses generate more revenue, uh, streamline their their business processes and things like that. So I might put some. I might my email might be, um, Hey John. So uh, I just put together a case study that shows how I've helped helped a consultant who uh, helps a dental offices get more business. Um, uh, you know, solve the problem of, of generating leads. This client was looking to bring in, you know, contact more dental offices and bring in more leads. And so uh, uh, what we've done is we've been able to uh, uh, help them do that. And I put all that information into a case study. Here's what the client had to say about it. It would be a one, you know, a one line thing that says, yeah, we used Ed's case study marketing system and we generated $60,000 in revenue in, in less than 30 days. And then I put right below that, uh, click here to read the case study. So keep it really short, really simple. You do not want to make the email long because you want to drive them to the case study and let that do the selling. And when I mean selling, let that that uh, allow them to, to read it and make the decision to take the next step towards working with you. So I hope that explains it. It's kind of a long answer. Yeah. Um, I think the only other question was one of mine that I had was, <clears throat> do you ever have these written... Uh, search engine optimization, is that something that you try to work into it too? Or um, 
that that's a that's a great question. The answer is no, and the reason why is because even when this is a page on your website, you really want it to be a private page. So what I will tell you not to do is do not write a bunch of case studies and go and throw them on your website. That's like the worst thing you could do. You want to make these special. You want to you want to make give these uh, uh, invoke what's called scarcity, right? So the only way someone can get to your case study is what by you prospecting them. And you can actually tell people that, you know, uh, I put together this private case study. It's not available to the general public. It's for your eyes only. Click here to go read it. That's another tactic that you can use to get people to read it. So, um, you know, that's the way we do it. We, we do not publish the pages that we put case studies on. They're private and they're just for our email campaign. The other reason we do that too is for tracking. So if you have a web page, you can track who goes to it. And that allows you to do other things on the back end, like send them additional nurturing emails and, and sequences and things like that. So um, if it was on the website, it would be more of a, a, a opt-in. So it says, you know, give us your email to opt-in to read this case study about this scenario or something like that. No, I wouldn't make them opt-in to read it. I would just provide a direct link from their, you know, from the email right to the case study page. I just would not make the case study page public on your website oh yeah yeah i was just thinking of how you could use it if it was hidden but still if they didn't come in through the email yeah yeah so the the the, the thing about the thing about it is is uh we don't we never use case studies as a lead generation tool i'm not saying you couldn't we just don't do it that way we, yeah we we rather use them as a you know as a, a kind of a inbound out outbound you know it's, it's that it's that uh blend between inbound and outbound marketing. You know, it is, it is sort of outbound because we're initiating it, but really what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the person there so they take the next step. Soon as somebody takes the next step from that case study, now you have a really qualified prospect because you know they're interested in what you have to offer. Great. And that's, that's really the goal of it, yep. All right, that sounds great. So I'll get you the, um, I'll get you the recording and uh, the, um, the all everybody that registered so if they didn't come you'll see if they didn't come and and then be able to follow up and um make some new connections and uh, maybe help out a few few people with with some case study marketing it definitely seems like a, a very effective tool and it's i think the simplicity of the process make it look like a document i can see now how that's <laughs> probably yeah. makes it more effective it's not as much so many graphics distracting you you kind of really just get you know absorbing the content yeah, well, this is, you know, in essence, this is what we call a marketing funnel, right? And so the email is the beginning of the funnel, the, the case study is the middle of the funnel, and the booking the appointment with you is the end of the funnel. And that's what we're trying to do. You know, we're trying to, we're not trying to tell people everything we're doing. We're just trying to get them to do one thing, right? That's the focus of this is just do one thing. Go read the case study. Yeah. Because if they read the case study, they're going to make that internal mental decision that you are the person that can help them achieve their goal or solve their problem. And that's what we're trying to do, right? And that's why they're so powerful. That's why, again, you know, those other methods that we talked about where if you meet somebody and they're, and, you know, and they're interested about what you're doing, you have a great conversation with them, follow up with a case study, put that case study in their hands, let them make that internal decision to take the next step. It's the most powerful way to do marketing that, that I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Th that's learned a lot today. Um, thank you so much for your time and um, spending it on the call. And um, I'll get you that follow up information and looking forward to, to collaborating in the future and seeing you at other meetings. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Donato. Right. Thank really you. appreciate it. Yep. Yeah. No, Take thank care. You. I appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. Have a good day. You too. All right, bye.